So as I mentioned in a previous video, it looks like written assignment number six has been our toughest written assignment so far for pretty much everybody. So I wanted to post a couple of solution videos um, to help you guys understand these problems before you, you move on in the course. Um, okay, so starting with 3a here. So we're supposed to find a set of vectors, and I put vectors in quotations here, because um, they're not going to be just the column vectors that you're used to. In this case, I mean, if we want to find a... Um, essentially a, a basis, hopefully, for uh, this subset of the 2x2 two two matrices, then then what the vectors here, the reason I put them in, in quotations is they're going to be 2x2 two two matrices. Whatever you use for your um, basis for the span here, it's going to be elements of this original set. You can't, you can't have vectors whose span is W using vectors that aren't themselves in W. That's just, that's never going to work. Um, so that's the reason for the quotations there on the word vectors. And um, I'm also pointing out there that what we write for 3a should be a, a set of 2x2 two two matrices. Um, okay, so the added condition here, we've got this equation 3a plus 2b minus c equals 0. I would rewrite that equation, uh, just move the c over, and so c is equal to 3a plus 2b. That's what I would take from that equation there. So I've got four entries in the matrix, but it looks like I can I can substitute for at least the C here. Um, so these matrices have the form A, B. For C, C is going to be determined by whatever A and B are. And then D seems to be completely independent here. But So we could express all of these matrices as A, times the matrix, let's see, what are our coefficients of A? 1, 0, 3, 0, plus B times, now we could write a 2 by 2 matrix with the coefficients of B, so 0, 1, 2, 0, and then D, oops, D times 0, 0, 0, 1. And this uh, describes all of the 2 by 2 matrices in W. Notice that if we um, distributed the A here, or distributed the B, distribute, the, well, kind of distribute the D, and add these up, we'll, we'll get back to this matrix here, which describes all of the matrices in W. Um, so the set of vectors whose span is W, well, we've written now a linear combination. A, B, and D could be any number, and you would have uh, a matrix of this form. So we've uh, expressed W as the span of, and if it's okay with you guys, I'm just gonna kinda underline them here, these three, these three matrices. And so um, that's the answer to part A. Um, what I was after in part B, um, since W is the span of vectors that uh, belong to W, then you can conclude that uh, W is a subspace. That's what I was really looking for. So a span of vectors within uh, M2 by 2 will always be a subspace of M2 by 2. Anytime you have a vector space and you take a collection of vectors from that vector space, the span of those vectors will always uh, be a subspace of that original vector space. So that, that's what I was going after with uh, 3b there. Now 3c, because uh, I got some solutions to 3c that were kind of half right, or if you had the wrong answer to a, then you might have made 3c a little easier on yourself than it really uh, was supposed to be, things like that. So um, whether or not you feel good about your 3c, you might uh, give me a minute here and just make sure that you are on the right track. So I'm basing this on these three matrices. These are my matrices from part A, and I want to show that those are linearly independent. So generally, to show that some uh, collection of vectors is linearly independent, uh, you want to show that this equation, so C1 times vector 1, which in this case is the matrix 1, 0, 3, 0, plus C2 times vector 2, which in this case is the matrix 0, 1, 2, 0, plus C3 times vector 3, which in this case is the 
matrix 0001 is equal to the zero vector, which the zero vector for the collection of two by two matrices is just a two by two matrix whose entries are all zero. Okay, and we wanna show that the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution, where C1, C2, and C3 are all zero. That would show that they're linearly independent. So that's the conclusion we're hoping to reach here. Um, so I would start by combining all of this on the left side to a single matrix. So for the upper left entry, I have C1 times one. So I have C1 plus zero plus zero. So I have just C1 in this upper left position. Okay, looking at the upper right, I have zero uh, plus C2 plus zero. So I have just C2 in the upper right. That's a two. Okay. Uh, now I have three times C1 plus two times C2 plus zero in the lower left. So I have three times C1 plus two times C2. And then in the lower right, I have zero plus zero plus one times C3. So just C3 in this lower right position. And this is equal to the zero vector, so zero, 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 zero. Now, just matching up the corresponding entries. Well, in that uh, first row, I have C1 equals zero. Okay. In the uh, second position here, I have C2 equals zero. Now, in this third position, I have 3C1 plus 2C2 equals 0. Well, I've already said that C1 equals 0, C2 equals 0, so that's already kind of given. Um, so I don't really learn anything there. But in this last position, C3 equals 0. Okay, so we've shown now that whenever I set up this equation here, the only solution turns out to be all three scalars must be 0. So since we only have the trivial solution, this proves that these, again, vectors in quotations, but this, this collection of uh, two by two matrices is linearly independent based on the result right here.